Hi, this is Don Farber with Vineyard Soft Corporation, and I'd like to welcome you to this training course on the Knowledge Sync solution. The subject for this training course will be the creation of linked queries in Knowledge Sync, and this is the first of three training sessions on the configuration of linked queries. In Knowledge Sync, there are typically two reasons why you might wish to link queries together. The first is to look for a more sophisticated or complex set of business conditions that cannot be identified within a single Knowledge Sync query. The second reason for creating linked queries is to allow you to identify conditions that exist between multiple business applications or multiple databases. In this training session, we're going to look at the first of those scenarios an event that uses multiple linked queries in order to identify a more sophisticated set of business conditions. And in this particular scenario, the conditions that we're going to look for are clients who have placed no orders within a certain number of days. Generically, this type of event is referred to as an event that's triggered on inactivity, the lack or absence of something happening within an underlying application. Now let me explain the way KnowledgeSync handles linked queries, and in this particular event it's using two queries. The first event, which is going to retrieve a list of customers, executes and retrieves its first matching record. Let's call them customer ABC. KnowledgeSync will then take that customer information and pass it into query number two. Query number two's job in this particular event's case is to count the number of sales orders that have been placed within the last 60 days for the customer retrieved by query number one. So query number one retrieves customer ABC and query number two then takes customer ABC and counts the number of sales orders. If that count is zero, presto, we have a scenario of a customer who has not placed any sales orders within a certain number of days. Now, before we look at the configuration of these two queries, there is one very important item that you need to identify when linking queries together. And that is the field that's going to enable KnowledgeSync to link data from query number one to query number two. And in this particular case, what you need to ask yourself is what field of data do these two queries have in common? Well, query number one is retrieving customer data. Query number two is also looking at orders that have been placed per customer. So the element of data that these two queries have in common is the customer number. That value exists in both our list of customers and in our list of orders per customer. So having identified that, our linking field, now let's take a look at these two queries. We'll go to our list of query definitions and scroll our list down until we find query number one called customers all and we'll open up that query. This is a very simple query in that it's retrieving data from just a single table, the customer table, and from that table it's retrieving only two fields of data, the customer name, because if we're going to send an alert message to a salesperson to let them know that one of their customers has not placed an order in a certain number of days, naturally we'd want to include the customer's name. What's absolutely essential that we choose as a column is the linking field. Again, we needed to identify what field of data query number one, our list of all customers, had in common with query number two, which is a count of orders per customer. Well, the customer there is our common field, and so it's the customer number that both queries are going to have access to and that we'll use for linking purposes. So in query number one, we make sure to choose the linking field, the customer number, and we make a mental note of the customized name that has been given to that linking field, in our case, cus underscore no. What you'll notice is that this query has no other parameters configured for it, and if we hit our preview button, we simply get a list of all of our customers showing the customer name as well as the customer number. Now let's take a look at our second query or our link to query. 
The first query, which you could refer to as your link from query, has nothing special designed in it other than you need to make sure that you select the link from field, the customer number, as one of the columns for that query. Now let's take a look at our second or link to query, which is looking at customers who have placed no sales orders in the last 60 days. Again, this query is a fairly simple one. It's retrieving data also from only a single table, but in this case, it's retrieving data from our sales order header table. And in fact, all we're having this query do is count the number of orders per customer. Now, in this particular case, we only need to choose a single field, and that is the sales order number field, and we've chosen a column type of count. We want Knowledge Sync to count the number of orders. Where do we specify that we want this query to count the number of orders per customer? And we want that customer that this query is using to be the same customer as is being passed into this query from query number one. That's done on our Filters tab. And on the Filters tab, I'd actually like to start out by talking about filter number two. Here you'll notice that we have a filter on the customer number field. Once again, that is our linking field. And we're specifying that the customer number retrieved by this query has got to be the same as, is equal to, notice here in our compare value, we are specifying the customized name of the same column, the link from column, if you will, from query number one. And again, you might recall when we looked at that query number one, the list of all customers, we chose as one of our columns the customer number, and the customized name for that field was cus underscore no. When you reference that customized name in the compare value of a subsequent or linked query, and you surround that value with the curly brace symbol, as we've done here, that's telling Knowledge Sync that this value is going to be coming into this query from a preceding query. Thus, if we again think about our scenario, query number one is going to run. It's going to find a matching record, customer ABC. Knowledge Sync is then going to take that customer number, ABC, and it's going to pass it into this query. So this query is going to automatically count the number of orders for the customer number that was sent to it from query number one. Now the only other filter that's in this particular query is a date calculation. Knowledge Sync has a filter that's calculating the number of days between the sales order date and the current date, and we're making sure to retrieve only those orders that were placed within the last 60 days. So we're saying here that the difference in days between the order date and the current date is less than 60 days. And finally, we have a sub-filter in this link to query because we want to retrieve only those customers where the count of their orders, and that's what we're counting right here, the count of the number of orders, is equal to zero. So, query number one has presented us with our first matching record, customer ABC. Knowledge Sync goes out and counts the number of orders for that same customer, that same customer being referenced on our filters tab, and Knowledge Sync is then using a subfilter in the second or link to query to see if that count, that number of orders that has been placed for customer ABC, over the last 60 days is equal to zero. So this is how you link queries together. Now a couple of very important notes about linked queries. Number one, you cannot preview a link to query. Why? Because query preview mode has no knowledge of a preceding query. So if we try and preview this query, well, this query is going to look for a customer number that's equal to left curly brace, cus underscore no curly brace, and we're going to get zero matching records. So again, you cannot use preview in a link to query as it will always return no matching records. 
The second important point about linked queries is if we go back to the event that's using these queries, and we reopen this event and go to our Queries tab, you'll notice that the actual linking of these two queries happens on the event level. On the event level is where you actually specify the queries that this event is going to use. Here's our first query, retrieving a list of all customers. Here's our second query, counting the number of orders for each of the customers returned by query number one. Is the order of these queries important? Absolutely yes. If we specified these two queries in the reverse order, the event would fail or it would simply find no matching records. So again, that's why I, in my query naming convention, always will refer to a link to query with the initial part of its description being the words link to. That is my visual clue to know that this query always has to come after a preceding query that first creates a link to field value. In this case, the customer number is what we're linking from, and then KnowledgeSync will be able to run this successive or link to query, retrieving only those records that meet both queries criteria. What you'll notice if we take a look for just a moment a little further into this particular event is that this event has access to all of the data from both queries. The customer number, the customer name, that's coming from query number one, and the count of orders that we automatically know is going to be zero is coming from query number two. So we'll stop here for now in this particular training exercise on linked queries. Again, the reason for linked queries in this case is to look for a lack of activity, whether it's a lack of orders, a lack of follow-ups, a lack of purchase orders, etc. Whenever you wish to look for a lack of activity within an underlying application, that is typically going to require two queries. The first query, which is that generic query to identify all customers, items, projects, etc. And a second query, which counts the number of orders, the number of follow-ups, etc. for each of the items returned by query number one. So we'll stop here for now on this training course on the creation of linked queries. I do encourage you to listen to the following training course on the creation of linked queries, which talks about linking queries across multiple business applications. But for now, I'll thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to speaking with you in a future KnowledgeSync training session. Thanks very much.